hi how's it and then whoa it's so cold hi how's it in the name of christ how are you doing it's a girl cran i am so cold yo i hope you're good i hope you're peachy i hope you're stella and i hope you're in a neat little bunch shoo i am cold yes well like but it's okay my my i will i will get warmer as i continue to speak because my um yeah my electric blanket is hot Ooh, but like i'm cold y'all <laughs> what 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 is what is contributing to how cold i am yes it's winter but i think it's just working out in the evenings i don't know whatever yo i'll be fine i will live like my bed is, is hot yeah yeah where my legs are i'm cool it's just my hands and my upper body yeah anyway whatever let's get straight into this the point to what we're talking about okay let's attempt to just stop dilly dallying <clears throat> let us attempt to stop dilly dallying okay okay whoa my hands will go in there and they will stay there what's up did i greet whatever okay so let me just put some caveats out there kindly look out for my captions they're not always accurate they sometimes use a small g for god they sometimes misspelled wrong word altogether stuff like that that's not me one day god willing in the future i'll edit them but i don't think there's a future like I, god just keeps confirming it but and that's what we're going to talk about today okay next up um, i'm very potentially wearing up makeup uh, you will know if i'm wearing it if i'm not you'll also know because it tends to bounce off and on my face <sighs> yeah it's an app okay yeah that's what's good um yo okay i'm actually getting warm as i speak right now Ooh, okay and then thirdly i have a segment oh, i don't want to bring my hand up like from down there anyway whatever i'm only human after all i'm only human after all i'm only human after all don't take a jab at me it's just not wise don't do a strange thing blah blah this here segment is an empathy segment that i am attempting to bring forth a blush to show you that i've got blood in my body when you prick me i bleed when you afflict me i say ouch stuff like that some days it comes through pops out rears its ugly head other days it just disappoints me today i think it's just like five two anyway that's to show that i've got blood in my body so mm. okie dokie yeah i think it's exercising in the evenings because on the weekends i don't get this cold anyway whatever so today's monday i'm sorry if you feel grossed out by me blowing my nose in front of you it's wintry and my nose is runny so just deal okay so it's the 11th of june 2024 two days away from my fast ending finally and i'm looking forward to it maybe if i um you know eat breakfast it'll i don't know like early meals earlier meals instead of just one a day I'll be less cold, but I doubt that. Anyway, whatever. Look, it's actually the 10th. Uh, yeah, but I've hopped over into the next day. Guys, we're going home. <laughs> mm -mm -mm. We're going home. We're leaving. Um, <laughs> And y'all y'all are not going to believe me until we're gone. Except for maybe like a remnant. Just one, you know, two, three, five people might actually hold fast to what I'm saying. Uh, but like we're going home. The level of evil that's ramping up. <laughs> I got bombarded and attacked last night and I am not going to labor on certain things that I got attacked by because I'm irritated. One, it's the whole Gen Z pursuit, like little boys, children, essentially, to me, they are children, kids, like just afflicting is gokwani like a whole older woman i've done videos before in the past speaking about that i am not going to get into it again i will not i will not be patronized but i had like a horrible terrible unbecoming stupid dream last night where it is that i was harassed by yet another gen z and i'm just like whatever ew i don't care like i'm not raising it again uh it's not worth it there's a video that i did where i said that uh this whole younger men older women you can just look people are going to be scrolling through my videos very soon so you will know what video i'm talking about ultimately by the time anybody at all with any level of interest is watching this video because right now i'm being ignored because of god the lord has seen it fit to allow a whole bunch of sorcery to appear to be working <laughs> A whole bunch of sorcery to appear to be working against my ministry. Uh, it's not that witchcraft is working. It's that the Lord wants. It's a. It's a strong delusion. It's a reprobate state. The Lord wants um, 
what do you call this people to get humiliated after the rapture has happened because you will have buried me from the world and they will have they were gonna get upset i told you there's gonna be like a whole bunch of mob justice against uh committed by lay janes and lay joes on the street about the rapture because of the way that the occult would have been persecuting christians in the run-up too like occult people are gonna get like killed some of them or severely injured to a point of like disability and whatnot getting beaten to a pulp unrecognizable faces and everything with bats and sharp objects being thrown at them because of the way that they would have worked so hard to make sure that nobody is listening to christians this thing that i am in south africa this thing of hiding true believers heh <laughs> yo it's going to get you y'all beaten down i'm just saying okay <laughs> i have been reluctant to come out with people's names and everything but i just feel as if though god is showing me stuff so that i can just bring out people with their twapes and with their bongas i i saw um like some huge tubers being like <laughs> this dude was like as left behind as left behind can get do you understand what i'm saying and he is involved in the occult from what the lord is showing me and I, he is a very believed christian at present and what he does is contributing to the mutiny against true saints true prophecy who it is that god has really sent people like those are sitting on the chests of true believers preventing them from actually getting heard and when the rapture has happened these people are going to be clobbered they are going to be clobbered do you understand people are going to in an anger be like we were supposed to be listening to the garabos of this world instead we sat around your ministry we subscribed to you we are just proliferated your statistics we liked your rubbish and you're still sitting here and you aren't even never mind not being a real deal christian but you contributed to the prevention of us looking at christians like essentially sorcery operating on youtube channels preventing the world from like it's like a global hypnosis preventing people from listening to true believers and god is letting it happen in some respects in some places not everywhere he is letting it happen that the judgment that is going to be fall the wicked that call themselves believers will naturally just take its course once the rapture has happened uh what was i gonna say some of them are, are not even gonna i already did a video where i spoke about how it is that there are gonna be people that are not even not, not even gonna make the the tribulation because they're going to pass away before the rapture because god does not even want to give them the evidence of the rapture because a wicked and a perverse generation sees after a sign but then there are going to be those that are still alive and they will shortly after the rapture has happened literally get neutralized they're going to get taken out by people because of how angry people are going to be in a spirit of vigilante justice and then there will be others that will be maintained alive right they will repent give their lives to christ for real having been these little sorcerers walking around in these streets pretending to be christian um and however with them being given a, a second chance by god because he loves them god chooses he's the one that chooses right they will be able to repent and give it i guess and live out their lives and get martyred in the tribulation but they are going to be hated by everyone they're going to be avoided they're going to be past shade like nobody's gonna want to hang with them essentially what i'm trying to explain is that at the revival the revival that's going to happen of the church like with people coming to christ because the rapture happened these people are going to be ostracized by even those who are converting to christ as you lied to us you lied you lied like you lied you were out here standing on the rooftop talking about jesus and you went the real deal so they will be able to repent they will be spared by god and that they're not going to be mob justiced they're not going to get killed by by an angry mob because they're not going to be in the climate of those angry enough to kill right but they're also going to be avoided they're also going to be avoided they're not going to have friends they're going to be in so much isolation so much solitude during the tribulation uh because of people recognizing them for who they used to be once upon a time that it's going to be that much harder for them to survive it why because it's just hard to survive anything by yourself it's better to be in concert with people you you can share resources you can put your minds together you can comfort one another all that jazz being alone sucks those people will be ostracized and isolated just as i am look at how my life is where it is that i'm living at the dregs of society corner of society squeezed into a little corner unable to come up for air unable to breathe they are gonna live like that they're gonna have to survive the tribulation without committing suicide in in like excruciating loneliness 
excruciating loneliness, running away from a system that is pursuing Christians unto death in excruciating loneliness. They will not be able to fellowship with other Christians because they're going to be given a whole bunch of hostile attitude. I'm just saying. Anyway, uh, this time is coming, you guys. It's coming, it's it's gawking at you, it's uh, uh, approaching you with a boot print on the face, a flying kick. And God keeps confirming it. When I was busy working out outside, okay, I'm getting warmer. It feels so good to be getting warmer. Oh, wow. <sighs> my hand is like chilling underneath my leg and on a hot blanket. So now life is better. I was busy with my mouse earlier and the surface in this cold air in this environment. And that's what made me feel like an icicle. But now I feel, I feel like a woman. Oh, oh, oh. Essentially, I feel like a human being okay and that's what's good yeah okay uh while i was working out i got a vision where uh wasn't it but it was <sighs> it was sort of kind of a vision but it was also sort of kind of a word of knowledge where the lord said to me the beamer seat the beamer seat the beamer seat while i was exercising i heard the beamer seat in this frozen icicle environment where i am having to work out <sighs> Because if I don't, where am I going to get my, 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 my chill? Where am I going to get my endorphins? The daily currency I have to collect is in there. Uh, but I, I, I just, I can't reshuffle my schedule. I can't work out earlier. I just can't. Maybe when my fast is over, I will try to work out during the day. But you see, this just, I can't. Like, ish, for a myriad of reasons, which I'm not about to highlight right now. It has to be later on in the day. Like, the way that it, anyway, whatever. Look, if things get too excruciating and too extreme with how hot, with how cold it is outside, then maybe I'll move it earlier. But you see, the thing about exercise is that during exercise, if I am pumped up enough and I'm not discouraged, I can actually, um, essentially not even feel that it's cold because I'm exercising, right? It's, it's afterwards that really just kind of kills me. It's, it's having to be unrobed before getting in the shower that makes me it just pinches my, my 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 skin to be so cold and then to have to like get dressed in that cold environment maybe i'll get dressed in the bathroom like, it doesn't really make a difference it doesn't make a difference like yo i'm just saying like i'm cold i'll buy a heater that's what i'm gonna buy a heater I have some spare change somewhere, just chilling somewhere. I have to go and get it. I'll buy some cheap heater. I'll buy a heater. It'll warm this environment and make my life easier. Because when I'm exercising outside, that I can survive. It's the aftermath that murders me. It's the aftermath. Yeah. The aftermath of being in some wet clothes. Because of anyway, whatever. I'm sorry. Like, I'm, I'm tiring. But that whole situation. Yesterday, when I was working on... Not yesterday. This evening. Today. Mm, yeah the lord said be my seat guys i am skeptical like doubting thomas i am skeptical like doubting thomas okay um but it doesn't matter that i'm skeptical because god just keeps confirming a wire wire time and time and time again the very same thing he keeps confirming to me that we are going home. What is the beamer seat? Those of you that don't know, I shall explain. Uh, the beamer seat of the Lord Jesus Christ is the seat of judgment that Christians go through. Christians. Um, and at the end, pretty much of all things, we don't endure. We Some some Christians will go through the great white throne judgment because there's the, the, the beamer seat happens, uh, I believe, during the tribulation. So uh, some of the... Uh, Christians that are going to come into heaven are going to be after the beamer seat because of the tribulation, those martyred saints, and not only that, also uh, people throughout the millennial reign of Jesus Christ are going to have to, just like everybody else, get born again. They're going to have to give their lives to God or lack thereof in the millennial reign. Not everybody in the millennial reign is going to be righteous. It's going to be a righteous reign, but there will be a, a, a few sparsely scattered weird souls that are going to insist on getting like just basically dying darkened we know that there's a thing in isaiah 26 uh, that you know a, a man will be considered young when he dies at 100 because of his sin type setup thing like a person that chooses not to give their lives to christ won't be given more than 100 years to live in the in the millennial reign there's going to be like a very long lifespan in that season type establishment thing so there are going to be people that are going to die outside of christ and then everybody that gets born is going to have to also go through what we all went through they're gonna have to get born again they're going to have to give their lives 
to Christ, but it's going to be that much easier because he's going to be all up in the streets. He's going to be here. So to not believe in him is just absolutely bizarre. I would imagine the judgment of people that reject Christ in the millennial reign, ah, it's far more excruciating, I would imagine, than anybody else because he was like, yeah, blessed are you when you believe and yet don't see. But then what's going on with you when you don't believe and yet you've seen Christ? Like, what's what's up with that? Anyway, mm. They're going to go through the uh, Great White Throne Judgment. They're going to be death and Hades that are going to be thrown in the lake of fire a second death. But everybody in the millennial reign that did give their lives to Christ, um, they, they still have to go through their judgment. Everybody has to go through some kind of a judgment because we don't just get into heaven and like that's it. It is appointed unto man to die once and thereafter is the judgment. We will have, as Christians, we have walked um, this walk as believers with errors in them. There are things we did and did not do. There are ways in which we ought have been and weren't. Personally, in my life, I am aware that there's going to be some Christians that would have seen my case and ignored it entirely. Stuff like that is going to get people um, judged. Like, uh, uh, the Lord will leave no sin unpunished, so people are going to lose rewards, but they're also going to gain rewards. Do you understand what I'm saying? Like, come, not appropriately responding to uh, persecution, being angry at God, not appropriately responding to a fellow Christian, quarreling, all that jazz. Things that we can potentially do that are not right as Christians, we are going to be called out on that. That's what I'm getting at. Mm, yeah, that's what the Bema Seed is about. But it's also about reward for the deeds that we walked in that were awesome. The ones that we were given to walk in in advance. That Bema seat, uh, I do believe, happens somewhere along the way in the tribulation or prior to the tribulation actually truly commencing. Uh, because I do believe there might be a little gap uh, first before the true true tribulation starts, before the first horseman of the apocalypse gallops. I do believe there might actually be a gap to accommodate things like the Gog and Magog war, maybe the Damascus ruinous heap thing type thing, the building of the temple. I don't know. I feel like there's going to be a gap, but we don't know. All right type establishment thing i feel like in that season i believe in that season it very potentially might happen that the bema seed is happening christians are being given their rewards they are being given their uh rebukes for what they did and then their eternal state is established uh and then we go on into the future uh then there's going to be christians the martyrs under the altar in revelation 8 they're still going to be coming into heaven but there will have already been a judgment that's happened god is not going to just keep doing a bema seat bema seat bema seat bema seat over and over as people come into heaven he's not going to just keep doing that um so i believe that he's going to bank those guys likely for the great white throne judgment or maybe the beamer seed will happen, I don't know, and then God will individually judge those saints that die prior to his second coming because we come back with Jesus Christ. But there will be saints that will pass away in the millennial reign of Jesus Christ because they repented in the millennial reign. They only lived in it. They were never even alive before. Um, they did not have to see the tribulation. They were born in the millennial reign. That's what I'm getting at. And then those that popped into the millennial reign of Jesus Christ and repented at the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ because they saw the coming of the Lord and they were like, oh, and they all decided to worship God. Yeah, those people are the ones that when they die, then they will be banked for the great white throne judgment. And then at the great white throne judgment, they will be uh, taken to, the, God will tell them, like, enter my rest if they names are found written their names are found written in the lamb's book of life but if the, their names are not found written in the lamb's book of life then they will be thrown into the outer darkness i was i used to be confused about that as to how is it possible for anyone at the great white throne judgment to um be found in the lamb's book of life because it, it just felt to me like it was a judgment for the sinners for the fallen that don't repent but it makes sense because of the millennial reign and because there will be some who will repent only at Christ's second coming, um, and people who will yet to who will yet get, get their incorruptible bodies because they lived in the millennial reign. I don't know when that resurrection happens. When they pass away, when do they get their incorruptible bodies? I don't know. Probably not immediately. Probably only once the Lord says to them, um, "Come up hither." You know, I don't know because it's the Great White Throne Judgment. But you get my point. Yeah. So. The uh, Bema seat of the Lord Jesus Christ, then, what I'm trying to explain at present is this judgment that happens for Christians that are going to be coming in the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ with Jesus. The holy ones of God that come with him at Armageddon. Second coming, holy legions, angels, um, 
the angels of God with also the human saved people that are in heaven having watched the Hunger Games below. Yeah, that's what's good. They come with Christ at the second coming, but before we can come with the Lord, our judgment has to be done and dusted and sealed. There has to have been something that finished off the process because we're now going to be living for a thousand years with Christ ruling and reigning. Our rewards had to have been given us, including our reward of what is going to be our rule in the millennial reign, what we're going to be doing, what portion of the earth we're going to be given to rule mm, type thing. And all that, I believe, happens at the Bema seat. Christ will probably be like, Garabo, seeing as they gave you so much grief, you're in charge of all of Africa. <laughs> I can't doubt that very much. I did not say South Africa because I already let you guys know that South Africa is going to cease to be a country. I've already done that video, so I'm not going to labor on it. There will not be a South Africa in the millennial reign of the Lord Jesus Christ. It is going to disappear as a country. Anyway, whatever. It's because of your wickedness. Lasagna. Uh, South Africans, you are drunk on occult magic. You are high on the supply of Satan. You are on some hallucinogens. And you think that this is a going concern. Your judgment is going to be the extinction of your country. You will be scattered, those of you who remain, into other parts of Africa. But you will not remain in South Africa. Your land is going to be engulfed. It's going to cease to be a nation. I already uh, spoke about that. So let's just move right on right ahead. Mm. Yeah, so the Bema Seat is the reward judgment or punishment judgment for Christians and Christians only. And when I was working out, yes, but the ones who are prior to the tribulation ending. Yeah, it's not the, the final be all and end all great white throne judgment. And the Lord said Bema Seat when I was working out. That be my seat happens during the tribulation, guys. Somewhere along the way there. Mm. I don't even think it happens during the tribulation. I think it happens before. I, like, I stand corrected. Like, I seriously stand corrected. I don't know. It's just that the tribulation, one thing I'm certain of, is that it's a serious affair that we are watching. We are watching it. We are watching it. There is nothing else happening in heaven during the tribulation other than the observation of the indignation that is being poured on the earth it's like a gladiator match it's like a spectator match it's like you know humanity your obsession with watching people fight one another unto death this hunger games theme i've been speaking it i do not believe there's going to be anybody in heaven during the tribulation that is sleeping or chilling in, on their terrace in their mansion just sipping orange juice while everybody else is watching some match some world cup match like no every body is going to be at the stadium i do not believe there is going to be a single saint or angel or created being a holy created being and of course god that's not at the match so that's why i do not believe that the beamer seat of the lord jesus christ happens throughout the tribulation or during the tribulation i don't believe that that's a thing because that's a whole process where minds have to be distracted from what's going on on the earth. Ain't nobody distracted. Okay, that is like, why do I say that? Because the Bible makes it clear that that's the thing. The Bible makes it clear. The war that is entered into, for instance, in the, the second heavens to kick out Satan and his legions by the holy angels, right? That is partaken, that, that is, that, that, the, the war that happens in heaven, I believe it's, I stand correct, I'm not even going to say where in Revelation, but the angels of God, holy angels, are charged to basically kick out Satan and a third of heaven's legions from the second heaven to fall on the earth, plunge. And it is that fall of the earth, plunging in onto it, and not being allowed anymore in the second heaven, as in get out altogether, you are no longer allowed in the second heaven. Right now they can roam in the second heaven. Third heaven is where God is at. First heaven is the sky that we see above. Yeah, that's what's good. Mm. Or is it the other way around? Is the first the one where God is at? I stand corrected, but you get my point. The second heaven is the middle layer where fallen angels can be up and downing. And that's where it is that God gives them instructions as to you can go left, right, do this to Garabo. Have you considered my servant Job? Yeah, fallen angels hang out in that spot, right? It's a it's a portion of heaven that's not the, 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 the main joint. Mm. And they have been there pretty much ever since they fell. That's what's good. They're going to get kicked out. 
somewhere along the way during the tribulation y'all y'all about to see some flames okay they're gonna get kicked out somewhere along the way but they're not gonna go without a fight they're actually going to imagine that they can fight to stay and so god is gonna charge his holy angels to kick them out the war will then be won by god's holy angels and they will then have to fall down on the earth and essentially all they'll have left now is the earth okay to be in so the third or the first heaven i stand corrected what the uh, order there is right i already made mention of that and it's written about the devil and i guess his legions that satan fell down and he is with great wrath great wrath because he knows that his time is short right so once he gets kicked out by the archangel michael and co out of heaven he is like the second heaven he's angry because he knows that there's not much time left here in these streets and so he pours out all of his wrath on the earth he basically ransacks the saints of the living god he makes war with them and overcomes them he is given authority to make war with the saints and to overcome them because of the fact that he's been kicked out of heaven and is with great wrath. So of course his wrath is first poured out on saints, but also understand it is going to be poured out similarly too on unbelievers because he's just mad at humanity at all. Everybody is going to feel it when those stars of heaven fall out of the second heavens. That whole process of fighting Archangel Michael and whatnot, everybody, uh, to kick out Satan from the second heaven is a charge. It's a command by God. Go kick them out. They don't, they're not welcome up in this joint anymore. Yeah. Meaning that they are in a position, a sort of kind of, you know, cued or just waiting for marching orders from a place where they've been also just watching what's going on. They are a battalion of soldiers that are waiting for a command to go in a particular environment that environment of which is wherever we all gonna be at watching what i like to call the hunger games proper down below we're going to be watching the hunger games well up above we're going to be watching the hunger games down below we are going to be watching the world essentially get fried and bright and everybody is in this place waiting to do what they need to do i once had a, a dream of like it was a long long table right a long like dinner table long and i say long because really i don't even know what else to describe it as because i couldn't see how how far it went on both the right and the left like it was just long long like a dinner table that was long going all the way right and all the way left i could not see where it ended and however i was at my particular joint <sighs> I was standing in front of my particular like uh, seat and it had a name there that I comprehended to be my name but it wasn't my name it wasn't Karabo it wasn't written Karabo there but I knew that that was my name right I can't even tell you what it was that I saw in my dream and that place was there like there was a plate on it and some crock some cutlery uh, next to it but you could tell that it was being prepared it was like people that it was busy it was bustling it was bustling i'm trying what i'm trying to get at right now is that it was bustling in this dream it was extremely bustling there were uh people that were just standing or hovering around trying to sit in their chairs uh type establishment thing but it, they were it's almost like they were just merely play sitting instead of actually truly decidedly sitting but there was not really anybody sitting at these at this dinner table at all all the way to the left and all the way to the right instead people who were essentially what i con uh, 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 understood to be dead saints or those who have been ushered into heaven they were bustling they were busy they were busy they were not just sitting waiting and those who appeared to be sitting were play sitting because they would sit briefly and then stand up and continue in a bustling state uh it's almost like this is my chair and i'm gonna be sitting here and then they would get up and, and do whatever and there were people that, that, like uh, setting this table they were setting this table and they were putting um cutlery and crockery was already there cutlery and crockery was already there but now what they were doing this busy bustling activity was putting food down and i remember they put a bowl of fruit in front of where it is that would be my um like plate in front of me right i'm just standing here watching all of this activity and guys i saw grapes all right grapes and i i went to try and grab a grape right one grape 
and y'all i am not lying to you like you see my hand right now it's not an underestimation my that grape i understand it was a green grape i i wanted to grab it with all of my hand because it was it was this big <laughs> it was a grape i reached out to grab a grape since they had put down a bowl of fruit and one grape was the size of my hand <laughs> it was this, it was like a an orange or not even an orange like a mango like a full-sized mango it was a full-sized mango grape that's how big these grapes were that is just how succulent and juicy it, like anyway whatever that's the one thing that really stood out to me the grape it was huge in its own you like one little grape not a bunch one little grape was this big all right um and i i saw everybody just bustling preparing bustling preparing this dinner table why did i tell you that dream it that, that dream happened like two two and a half years ago all right why did i just explain that dream to you i explained that dream to you to help you understand that people presently in heaven right uh, are not just sitting around floating like little ghosts waiting for whatever they're busy they are preparing they are preparing preparations are being made oh my goodness like i keep hearing that time and time again as well all throughout the day they are preparing for the wedding supper but it was not just the wedding supper i was in the wedding banquet hall but it was a vast environment it was heaven so for those reasons there were other things being prepped but there were people designated or allocated duties jobs and some of them were saints who had a job to they had a job to set the table uh that that the table this long table this it was long to the left and to the right i couldn't see the end of it right to set the table for the saints that i guess are down below and for themselves too like you know a dinner is about to happen a wedding is gonna happen so who, people in here what, what i'm trying to explain is that people are working right now in heaven nobody is just merely sitting around we are preparing for the greatest time in all of history we are preparing for a match a stadium is being built so that some people could sit down at the bleachers and watch a match like in south africa during the 2010 not during but in the run-up to the 2010 world cup you know we we won the bid and we were like yeah yeah the country was very happy uh and then we entered into preparations as a nation for the world cup the how train was being built in the run-up too it wasn't even 100 percent ready by the world cup but that was the main purpose of it anyway um yeah but like stadiums had to be refashioned uh, uh it, it routes airports uh, companies sponsors so many things had to be done in the country in the years from the moment that we won the bid for the 2010 world cup all the way up until the day before the country was in preparation for that day so that when the guests would come so that when the um tourists would come in they just merely rock up and sit down and enjoy the country during the match they go everywhere that we have prepared for them to rock up at right do you see what i'm saying similarly too just like with the 2010 world cup i saw a bustling activity of that nature like it there were preparations planning for the date of the match now on the day of of, of like the imagine like a world cup final you know uh the, the 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 soccer world cup final i think it was italy and spain that time in the 2010 one yeah most africa but anyway whatever imagine uh, a soccer world cup final right uh a stadium is set and everything and then people make a decision to stay at home and just sleep in call it in because apparently allegedly they can afford to miss the final of the world cup no you are getting in your car you are going to the stadium and you are staying put you are making sure that by the time this match starts you are in the stadium and you are watching do you understand what i'm saying so the preparations are made that you might be uh, that those that have made reservations those that have made reservations for that seat for that match to watch it will be there and nobody wants to miss that nobody will miss it if at all we're living in a perfect ecosystem which heaven is nobody misses it when they've made a reservation and the lord keeps using the word again dinner reservations dinner reservations no dinner reservations dinner reservations dinner reservations for what the wedding supper guys guys wedding banquet oh goodness gracious no oh man oh man mm. 
dinner reservations. We have made dinner reservations. Christians down in these streets, anybody that gets born again, anyone that is presently born again has made a reservation. And there are people who are yet to make reservations that are going to make reservations, uh, seeing as we are not yet gone. There will be people that are going to be making reservations tonight. There are people that are going to be making reservations tomorrow morning. There are people that are going to be making reservations in a week. God willing, should that week not um, yet have a raptured us type establishment thing. In other words, there are people who are going to be getting born again in the next coming seconds and weeks. You get my point. And in so getting born again, will have essentially made a reservation for dinner to go home. This dinner reservation, yeah, type setup thing, <clears throat> I saw my my particular plate already was set not my particular it was everybody's place was set the crockery and the cutlery was there what was being put down was the food so y'all need to understand that that that's just how ready this thing is once the crockery and cutlery is there and cooking is happening and food is being placed fr fruit bowls are being put y'all we're close <laughs> and that was two and a half years ago when i saw some giant like fruit one grape of which was the size of like that like a mango yeah i saw that two and a half years ago how my what what in the what in the world is chilling on those tables now probably like legs of lamb and some chicken now like guys i don't know okay fish angazi like soup like angazi starters maybe have already been put i do not know but one thing that is certain is that those dinner reservations are made for the halftime of the match. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Those dinner reservations are made for halftime. For halftime. Halftime, guys. Because that's when we eat. The wedding supper of the Lamb does not happen in the beginning. God waits for martyred saints in the tribulation, as many of them as possible, to be collected into heaven. And then we have the wedding supper. It's in Revelation, the book of Revelation. Where's my Bible? One second. Yeah, I'm, I'm out here looking for it. The wedding supper of the Lamb. Uh, so you can understand. Y'all. Um, because God is just that amazing. Like he literally, he waits. He waits. He waits. He does not. Uh, <laughs> he 19. It's, it's, it's like towards the end, actually. Never mind, even. <laughs> it's not even a half of time. It's after the soccer match. It's, it's, it, no, it's, you know, when it is, it, it's like, it's like when, when the, 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 the I don't know, like, how can I describe? It's like when the match has already been won and everybody is like celebrating crazy in the streets baby 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 and then only people are out here going to like bars and whatnot to rejoice to celebrate and to what have you that's what the wedding supper of the lamb is because it is preceded sorry it is it is succeeded by the second coming of the lord jesus christ it, it is succeeded by such hard knock plagues on the earth that garner a, a bad attitude on the part of people on earth to hook up an, a battle of Armageddon and a, a, an army against God. And then that's when the second coming happens. The wedding supper of the lamb happens in Revelation 19. After God lambastes them with the final bowls. It's like, okay, so there are seven, seven, there are three, three sevens in terms of judgments, right? The indignation that has passed come into my chambers. It's written in God's word, I believe in Isaiah 26 stand corrected and uh, uh close the door behind you until the indignation has passed this indignation right that is written off is through three uh sevens it's through seven 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 seals seven trumpets and seven bowls of god's wrath first is the seven seals that are open and then it's the trumpet judgments and then it is the bowl judgments at the end of the bowl judgments the seven 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 that's when rejoicing happens in heaven after babylon has fallen that's when essentially there's like a it's like the capital in the hunger games celebrating and cheering but people are still on the floor right at this point there will have been so much killing of christians person like because of what do you call this thing the mark of the beast the amount of beheading in revelation 16 it is written right that the blood of of those that have been martyred will fill up i believe that speaks of the blood of the saints uh seven is it seven thousand six thousand one thousand how many stadia after they kill gods in, in revelation 14 sorry 
and the wine press was trodden outside the city and blood flowed from the wine press as high as a horse's brittle for 1600 stadia there will have been so much martyrdom and the reason why i believe that this blood that fills up 1600 stadia is the blood of the saints is because the title in revelation 14 from verse 14 is the harvest of the earth the harvest of the earth in other words the those that are getting taken to heaven those that have made dinner reservations the martyrs the martyrs they get killed the okay revelation 14 14 then i looked and behold a white cloud and seated on the cloud like one uh seated on the cloud one like a son of man with a golden crown on his head and a sharp sickle in his hand and a sharp sickle in his hand right so this sickle is to harvest who is God harvesting? His saints. But how is this harvest happening? Through beheading. It is basically God finishing the wicked off through the wicked finishing the Christians off. So let's, okay, let's keep on reading. Then I looked and behold a white cloud and seated on the cloud one like a, the son of man, like a son of man with a golden crown on his head and a sharp sickle in his hand. And another angel came out of the temple calling with a loud voice to him who sat on the cloud put in your sickle and reap reap for the hour to reap has come for the harvest of the earth is fully ripe in other words the fullness of the saints is fully ripe so he who sat on the cloud swung his sickle across the earth and the earth was reaped that is just a bloodshed of monumental proportions of christians on the earth by the wicked who at god's charge they said you know it's written in god's word that the lord has set apart everything for its purposes including the wicked for the day of trouble this is the wicked for the day of trouble they get so indignant against a holy god that has been lamp basting them with plagues that they take it out on christians and they don't see that it's all within god's plan to reap the saints take them home because we gotta eat now it's time to celebrate, all right? However, those of us that are there are watching. However, others are about to be um, added to us. Then another angel came out of the temple of heaven, and he too had a sharp sickle. And another angel came out of the altar. And the angel who has authority over the fire and called with a loud voice to the one who had a sharp sickle, right? Put in your sickle and gather the clusters from the vine of the earth for the grapes, for the grapes are ripe listen to this put in your sickle and gather the clusters from the vine of the earth for its grapes are ripe this is a description of christians there is no way that this is speaking about unbelievers these are saints that are being reaped and they have endured so much persecution so the angel swung his sickle across the earth and gathered the grape harvest of the earth listen to this he gathered the grape harvest of the earth threw it into the great wine press and then he threw it into the great wine press of the wrath of God. So in other words, the, 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 the grape juice wine that has been gathered is the blood of the saints. And this blood of the saints is then thrown into the wine press of the wrath of God. Because God is now super mad, livid at the nth degree because you have killed my children. You have killed my children, right? Put it, uh, uh, it threw it into the great wine press of the wrath of God, and the wine press was trodden outside the city, and blood flowed from the wine press as high as a horse's brittle for one thousand six hundred stadia. Then there are the seven, uh, the, the, the the seven plagues of God's wrath that come. So this is the final judgment on the earth, right? Revelation. Uh, 15 and 16 are the final judgments on the earth the seven bulls of god's wrath are now being poured out precisely because of all the martyrdom of the saints all the martyrdom of the saints ziawa ziawa and then there is the um, babylon that falls right the prostitute and the beast get uh, uh, lambasted and then only once the beast and the prostitute and babylon has fallen oh i'm okay my hands are getting cold again then we rejoice in heaven then we rejoice in heaven so in Revelation 14, the remainder of the saints get reaped through a severity of martyrdom. That blood angers God. He pours out seven pl uh, place of God's wrath, gets rid of Babylon, uh, judges the prostitute, right? And the uh, and the beast, not the beast, sorry, it is the beast. Uh, it, it's just the prostitute and the beast, yeah. It judges the prostitute, judges Babylon, and then Gatula, while everybody is scraping their body parts on the floor on earth. Because we're eating dinner, and during dinner, 
the fires that are burning, the billows of smoke all over the show, the desolate wastelands are going to be teeming at the folds with crawling people, like I said, piece of pudding, like picking up their thumbs from the floor, angry at God. And it will be a still season of just basically billows of smoke going and going. But there is no plague falling right now because we're eating. We're at dinner. Hey, <laughs> guys. There is a scene in the cabin in the woods i keep saying what a predictive programming in the entertainment industry look out for it sometimes it speaks of the time that's coming the devil is obsessed with the season there is a scene in the cabin in the woods where um you know in uh, cabin in the woods it's corporate the, the the name of the elite body are called corporate and in the cabin in the woods right there is a girl that is being murdered inside the arena she is you know they watch them through monitors screens and she's busy dying and there is a monster that's that's like chasing her, pursuing her, and she's running, screaming, ah, ah, and she's yeah. And then the camera pans away and goes inside corporate. And guess what they're doing inside corporate? Not even looking at the screens. They're not looking at the screens anymore. They're, they're no longer watching their kids getting killed off one by one. Now it's like lunch or something for them. It's dinner. It's break. It's a respite. They cheer and they toast. Breaking, like, like, you know, uh, toasting, uh, opening bubbly, breaking bread, laughing, ha 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 ha. And in the monitors in the background, like that scene in the cabin in the woods, like, it's just, it's so epic. Like in the monitors in the background, they're not watching them. But you, as a person watching the movie, you see what's going on in the background, in the monitors. While these people are toasting, cheersing, they're eating, they're drinking, right? They're not looking at the monitors, but you can see in the monitors and they are showing a screen. Screens, uh, multiple ones at that, of these people just suffering in the back. And this girl is actually being mauled at by some beast and she's running, she's crying, she's screaming. She gets pounced on and these people are like, yeah, oh, oh John, this, that, oh, and they're talking, it's like, it's, it's ridiculous. And then the camera goes on then to refocus on the dying girl. And then we see the rest of her dying. We see the rest of her dying. That scene in the cabin in the woods is the best example that I can use to help you understand what is going to be happening in heaven. There is going to come a time when we take a break from watching the, the carnage on the ground and eat and drink. But people will still be getting mauled at by beasts, by fallen angels. They're still going to get pursued by that which are the plagues on the earth. People are still going to be crawling having lost legs, having half their faces blown off, crawling, like, yeah. And we are just drinking, eating, rejoicing in heaven. I keep saying, Hore, the obsession of Satan with the elite and uh, 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 some peasant people, some suffering people fighting one another unto death. That whole theme, like it, it's in the Hunger Games, it's in the Squid Game, it's in Cabin in the Woods, it's in Alice in Borderland. Like there, there are just so many shows on in the entertainment industry across the world, never mind just in Hollywood, do you understand? That have got that theme of an elite body of people who are just watching poor people suffer. Like a whole bunch of, like the majority of the Earth's essentially citizenship suffer while the elite eat. And usually they make the elite look really evil in these movies. But in reality, what the devil is trying to show the world through these movies, because he owns the entertainment industry, yeah, is what's coming to the world. Like he's mocking them with an upside down version of what's actually going to happen. The righteous, the elite are going to one day watch people fight unto death, try to make heaven. Only few make it and people will be massacred by threats manufactured in an arena, not in an arena, sorry, in a, in a control room in the sky that are going to be thrown on the on the earth and people are going to have to basically strive to survive it's written in revelation 9 that this calls for a, a, a perseverance of the saints uh, after one of the plagues gets thrown this calls for perseverance of the saints the one thing they're protected from is from being stung by those ugly monsters but they are going to face a whole bunch of persecution even after the mark of the beast is um it's like a whole thing now after revelation 13. it calls for the perseverance of the saints so if as a Christian, you must, it's written in God's word, if to captivity you must go, then captivity to captivity you must go. If to the sword is where you must go, then to the sword you must go. But in all of this, you have got to be maintained in your godliness. You can't fall away from God. You can't fall away from God. You need to recognize that manje, like things have gotten really deep. Things have gotten really heavy. Um, and is it Re Revelation 9? Things have gotten so 
terrible that at this present moment revelation 9 is indeed where it is that yeah they did you know yeah they they get eaten by some strange uh, creatures right the rest of mankind um who were not killed by these plagues did not repent of the works of their hands nor give up worshipping demons and idols of gold and silver and bronze and stone and wood which cannot see here or walk nor did they repent of their murders of their sorceries and of their sexual immorality or their thefts yeah okay the human race just stays nasty but i'm actually looking for the part in the book of revelation where the lord speaks about how it is that this calls for the perseverance of the saints that if you must go to prison go to prison if you must go to um what you call the, uh, uh, this to, if you must go to prison go to prison if you must get killed get killed but you have got to persevere because things get so ridiculously crazy i think it is actually revelation 9 i stand corrected one second i actually want to find it i found that it. it's the mark of the beast it's the mark of the, like after the mark of the beast like uh what is this uh, once people are forced to basically just like take the mark of the beast there becomes a whole bunch of martyrdom this is now revelation 14 the one way it is that the one prayer of the right of god he's he's reaping the earth that's why get that's why i say that it is uh it is the blood of the saints that fills, that fills up 1600 stadia uh more than, because the blood of everybody is about to be populated on the earth in the plagues of revelation 15 and 16 okay yeah and it's written here according to god according to the book of revelation which is i guess according to god and the smoke of their torment goes up forever this is for the people who took the mark of the beast okay and then in revelation 14 12 it is written here is a call for the endurance of the saints those who keep the commandments of god and their faith in jesus christ and I, so basically here they yeah and this is not the first time yes i found the other one in revelation 13 where they speak about the mark of the beast again listen to yet more calls to endure and all who dwell on earth will worship it that would be this beast every this is from 13 8 and all who dwell on the earth will worship it everyone whose name has not been written before the foundation of the world in the book of life of the lamb who was slain there again lies therein again lies predestination if anyone has an ear let him hear and then here's the banger if anyone is to be taken captive to captivity he goes if anyone is to be slain with the sword with the sword he must be slain here is a call for the endurance and faith of the saints it is said in revelation 13 and it is reverberated yet again in revelation 14 because it's gonna get really deep it calls for the perseverance and the endurance of the saints this whole thing that is going on down in these streets do you understand what i'm saying it has been shown you in uh, across multiple entertainment industries of the earth the hunger games and there's going to be some people that are going to win the games they're christians they're going to endure a terrible earth too with favor every so often given them because certain plagues don't land on them like the ones in revelation 9 with those, with those funny uh, creatures that have got the sting of scorpions have um, been expressly communicated to to leave alone those who have got the seal of god on their foreheads but everybody else it'll sting them for five months and they will seek to find death and not be able that's what's good that's as much as that's the only reprieve that christians have that plagues that are obviously set apart for the wicked only fall on the wicked those who take the mark of the beast are also going to be uh have a in the seven bowls of uh, god's wrath they will be thrown they will be scorched with great heat and they will have loathsome sores that are going to appear on their bodies because they took the mark of the beast uh those who have not taken the mark of the beast uh but i have not repented they're not going to have the loathsome source not everybody is going to give their lives to christ but also not everybody is going to take the mark of the beast there will be some people that will be alive at the end of the tribulation that did not take the mark of the beast but that also did not trust in jesus so they will basically be the ones that are looking at the son of man coming and be awarded an opportunity some of them to live out the rest of their lives in the millennial reign if they will repent type setup thing so not everyone takes the mark of the beast but not everyone also repents yeah saints however will be harvested in the last remaining batch of us uh of them let me say them because i'm going to be in heaven already uh in revelation 14 uh, but and revelation 14 precedes 19 of course and revelation 19 is where it is that there is a celebration in heaven there is a rejoicing in heaven and that rejoicing in heaven in revelation 19 is then followed by dinner it is followed by the wedding supper of the lamb so when i uh say the the beamer seat of the lord jesus christ 
like what is this uh, no not not be messy so i already spoke about that but what i wanted to say when i say that there is nobody not watching the hunger games in heaven at this particular juncture there is nobody not watching there is nobody not watching everybody has a job i i, I told you guys about that dream where it is that there was bustling activity and dead saints like those who left who came before us were preparing they were working too. They were preparing tables and whatnot for us. Type thing. They all had a job. Yeah. Uh, but when the match commences, when when the when when it's, when the referee is like, Brr, the Book of Revelation makes it clear that everybody is going to be watching what is going on down below. And every so often, there will also be people who or beings, created beings that have, I guess, a part to play in this whole thing. Like the angels of God fighting fallen angels to get out of the second heaven. There they have a job. But with saints, it's going to be worship, encircling the throne, and watching. That is made clear even in Revelation 8. Revelation, where's 8? The seventh, uh, the, the, the seventh seal and the golden censer. We know everybody's watching this match. There's nobody in their bedroom, in their mansion, just sleeping, choosing to ride out the match. Nobody everybody is here to watch and why would you miss it you are literally being given an opportunity uh front row seats to watch those who listen to this y'all endured you through 10 years <laughs> of isolation persecution suffering want lack unemployment moneylessness yeah um lovelessness husbandlessness childlessness um disrespect uh Honorlessness, YouTube channel monetization lessness, people who will have actively participated in the mutiny against your person, men who will have tried to force you to be with them with Corovela, all different kinds of weird people, like an entire 10 years and counting. You're given an opportunity to watch these little panikis, these buffoons, run for their lives. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm not listening. <laughs> you are given an opportunity to watch people that endured you through your life being dragged through the mud since you gave your life to Christ. The betrayal, the stabbing in the back, the unfair suspension, the unfair dismissal, the lies, the reviling that was spoken against you. My goodness. I get to watch <laughs> the, the, the former marketing um executive of mtn i i want like, i get to watch my former boss my former colleagues i get, <laughs> i get to watch my cousin my sisters i get to watch my whole family i get to watch listen to this my ex-boyfriends i get to watch my former friends i get to watch south africa <laughs> <laughs> cease to be a country i'm sorry i'm sorry i need that that's why it's written to, in god's word that leave room for god's wrath it is for god to repay a desire for revenge mind you understand this get it in and of itself is not evil a desire for basically the sweetness of revenge in and of itself is not evil what's evil is when you take matters into your own hands too long for justice is to be human and it is also to be made in the image of God because in and of himself he hates unequal scales. So how much I salivate at the prospect of watching the marketing officer, the chief marketing officer of MTN at the time of the loss of my job. Basically, be me now. Struggle to get through the day because of what he did to me, what he sparked, what motioning of random rubbish against a completely innocent woman to a point of a loss of an entire career with me gaining absolutely no justice on this side of life for me to get to watch that dude struggle to eat crawling around trying to hold on to his dear life and having a rough life rooting for him to not take the mark of the beast and should he make a decision to take it anyway watch him get scorched with great heat and grow loathsome sores understand that salivation on my part to see that happen is in and of itself not problematic. Do you understand what I'm saying? It is in and of itself not sinful. What would be sinful is if I went to the kitchen, grabbed a knife, walked to where that bugger lived and put a knife in his heart. That would be problematic. However, what I'm doing is waiting on God for that justice. It's called a table being prepared for me in the presence of my enemies. It is the feat or the deed or the activity of waiting on a holy God to avenge you. 
come into the chambers of your master, my beloved, until the indignation has passed. So essentially that indignation, I've got front row seats. I've got a ticket. I've, got, I've made dinner reservations first and foremost, but in the run up to, I am going to be watching some Hunger Games. And some of the people that I'm going to be watching, watching, struggling to get through the day are the ones I've mentioned right now. They're going to get landed on by asteroids. They're going to get like ransacked. Like some of them will inevitably take the mark of the beast. Others, however, we will be rooting for them because they're going to get born again. That's what's good. Yeah, I will get to say from a vantage point where I have waited on God, I told you so. My desire for revenge is rightly placed. It is not evil. It is righteous. I have got a righteous indignation and I'm not taking matters into my own hands. I am warning, am I not, my enemies to avoid this day. Or should they find themselves now that the rapture has happened, having to face this horrible future? My desire is that they should repent, but if they don't, I will also have a mighty good time watching them get squashed, scorched with great heat, have loathsome sores, blaspheme God, continue in their sorceries, their sexual immoralities, all of their random revilings of the Lord because he plagued them. Because that plague was exceedingly great, they blasphemed the God of heaven. I am going to just watch and enjoy as I recline my proverbial chair, where it is that I will be at in heaven, having been endured through nonsense, made to be scraped through the mud, disenfranchised, utterly shattered from a future, uprooted from any kind of a semblance of a normal life by people who thought they got away with it, by people who imagined they got away with it. So this year, me laughing, me, me laughing at the prospect of watching certain people just scream and struggle to come up for air. Yo, it's coming from a place of great pain. It's coming from a place of great sorrow and from a strong desire for revenge. I can not wait for that day. I can't wait because I will have worked like a dog. Will I have not? To try and make you not have to end up like that. Is this not what I'm doing? Look at how tirelessly I am working right now to salvage you, to try and maybe get you to go to heaven with us without even having to endure the tribulation. I am working like a dog to avert people from that eventuality. But aren't they working like a dog also to ascertain that I don't grow on YouTube, that I don't monetize, that I don't get views, that I don't get my shorts go nowhere? Are they not working like a dog to make sure that South Africa, which is going to cease to be a nation, by the way, can't hear me. They're keeping South Africa sorcerers. They're keeping these sangomas, sangomas. They're keeping these soothsayers, soothsayers. They are keeping these ancestral worshippers, ancestral worshippers. You're doing that. So, seeing as you're working so hard, tirelessly, to ascertain that I am maintained in binary code for views on YouTube, I will not wince, neither bat an eyelid, when I'm finally rejoicing in heaven, while there is a screen in the back, a monitor, like properly just continuously running, as I'm toasting and cheersing eating a grape that big, mm, while you die. I will have done all this in the run-up to to try and prevent that death. That's what I'm getting at. I'm working really hard for your souls. But the day's gonna come when I don't have to work anymore. Down tools now. Garabo. We're done. Come into the chambers, my bride. And chill with me until the indignation has passed. As a Philadelphian, I will have ascertained that my crown does not get stolen. And now I have been spared from the hour of trial, which is coming to test those who are on the earth. And now your hearts are failing you for the things which are coming on the earth, are they not? Luke 21 being fulfilled, as well as Revelation 3 and 4. Mm. But in the run-up to, like I said, you will have made sure that the Sangoma stays a Sangoma. You will have made sure that the Gorobela junkie stays one. That these men who feel entitled to a woman that's not theirs will still continue to insist because she's unemployed. She's going nowhere. One day she's going to capitulate. One day she's going to give up. One day. Mm. And then boom, rapture. Oh, look at you rolling these streets with a loathsome sore. Blaspheming God because the plague is exceedingly great. Do not misinterpret my salivating after that date as just an unfounded, unfounded and uncalculated anganji. Don't look at me as just a merely hangry person. I'm angry because I'm hungry for affection. I am righteously indignant and rightly placed in that environment. And the Lord has compassion and mercy on that indignation. He gets it, he understands it, understands it, and has been slow to anger, has abounded in steadfast love over you to a point of delaying my breakthrough, to a point of delaying my deliverance, and therefore your comeuppance. He has delayed it for your sake. But listen, 
It's written in Psalm 125 that the scepter of the wicked will not remain on the land allotted to the righteous, lest the righteous should turn aside their hands to do evil. Your scepter has been all up in my grill, all up in my cheeks and in my hair. Okay, mm, for much too long now. I am exasperated. I am flattened like an iron. And if at all I don't get reprieved from this very soon, it is going to start to become an abomination to God for me to be maintained in that state because I may very potentially fall away. He will not let me be plucked out of his hands. So before I fall apart altogether, I just burst. Mm. He will take me home and ruin, ruin the world that he might rebuild it. And you will be a tribute in the Hunger Games arena. And you're going to have to fight like Katniss Everdeen to win. That's what's good. In an environment where the odds are very highly unlikely in your favor because the road is narrow that leads to life that few there be that find it. It is going to be just a remnant that are going to get rescued out of the tribulation. Even though it's a great multitude, uh, it is ultimately a great multitude out of billions. So I don't know what that number looks like, but it will still be a narrow road that leads to life that few people find. The majority of people are going to reject Jesus. They're going to continually still do that. That's what's good. Mm. You will still continue to turn your backs against the brethren. Yeah. So... You had it coming. You totally did. You had it coming, guys. But like I said, I will have been warning you, and not just me, but many others like me. We will have been warning you. So the nobody, what I'm trying to explain right now, is going to be sitting in their, like, mansion, just scrolling through heaven's proverbial DSTV, choosing to just call it a night or ride it out or call it a day or rain check or whatever. On the tribulation, nobody is taking a rain check on the tribulation. There's no one in heaven that's not going to be a spectator of that entire event. All the three sevens, the seven seven sevens, the seals, the trumpets, and the bowls of wrath. Nobody is going to be calling a rain check on that. And neither is anybody going to have a desire to. Nobody's going to be dragged there out of their, against their will because God is so sovereign. Everybody is going to be there with bated breath. Everybody is going to be there happily, merrily, and essentially rubbing their hands together on some, let's see what, what's going to happen. Who's going to win? Why? Because they will all have been righteously indignant because you all will have hated disciples, thrown us out of your synagogues, imagined that what you're doing is a service to God, clubbed against us in your debauched state, having been maintained in it, abused us because we walked away from that lifestyle. You would have caused us to lose our jobs you would have stolen our husbands in your witchcraft rituals you will have miscarried our babies you will have uh, humans sacrificed our family members in order to get to us you will have caused accidents on roads just to get to us you will have you will have you will have you will have sown discord between brothers you will have come into our churches infiltrated them and made our babies cry you will have done all that jazz you will have seduced our men that they might cheat on their wives. So you will, you get my point, right? You would have done all stuff like that. You would have, you would have done that. You would have done that. So there's not going to be anybody in heaven taking a rain check on the tribulation. It's what you must understand. We are all going to, with bated breath and early, are we going to arrive? Be planning to watch you struggle to be Katniss Everdeen. The one or two people out of these billions on earth that win the Hunger Games. May the odds be truly in your favor. But the only reason why we will have that righteous indignation and that straight face as you suffer is because look at what you're doing today, right now, on this 11th of June, 2024. Look at what you're doing. Watching a woman with really excellent content go absolutely nowhere, even though she's trying to snatch even you, little witch, from the flames of hell. You will have done all that. So in the same way that you're waiting with bated breath for my compromise and my settling against God, we will be waiting with bated breath for the tribulation to start already. It's been a minute. Whoa, I can't wait. I'm working hard for you now so you don't have to enter into that season. But when you do, I will not wince. And there is like, guys, let's just move into the next part because I've been speaking now for a minute. I got dreams. I got visions with the Lord showing me some professing Christians who now today are responsible for the mutiny against people like me. For why it is that certain Christians are not being listened to on the internet. And I am wary of staying my mouth from exposing these people. Because I'm scared of speaking. Bottom line is nobody watches me. Nobody watches me. And so because nobody watches me, these people, by the time people do watch me, because the tribulation is now commencing, they will be around and I will be vindicated for calling them out. I'm gonna call them out. Because God, God wants me to expose them. Why? That you might understand why it is that you are still left behind. Why you did not listen to Karabo. Because Karabo's message did not get to you. It would have been due to these 
Christian content creators. Christian content creators. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah, that are actively stealing YouTube views, growth of YouTube clout or whatever from true believers that are called by God to send out a message. And these dudes are just trying to grow numbers. And they don't realize that the kingdom of, he of, of, of death, of darkness, operates in... Because it cannot create anything new. It cannot manufacture anything brand spanking new. It operates, therefore, on a trading system. Something like it's like, like osmosis. It's like osmosis. In order that fluids might be transferred to another cell, to their cell, to their unique individual space. They've got to saturate that environment with a whole bunch of salt while saturating themselves with water so all of the transfer of salt might come into their space so that everybody might gravitate towards them they make themselves water and they make garabo salt they make me insufferable they, they they make it they basically cause people to gravitate to them by stealing that's how the kingdom of darkness works it cannot create anything new so when people are promised that you're going to get a hundred thousand subscribers in five months after doing a witchcraft spell, understand, you're stealing them from someone. You are hypnotizing the world to not look at certain other people. And where it is that these Christian content creators are stealing from, they are stealing from other Christians. The devil literally is redirecting traffic to those that have not been called and yet they've gone. And I'm going to call them out because like I said, ain't nobody watching me. Ain't nobody watching me. Ain't nobody going to be like this chick. How dare you? This is, this is what do you call this? Um, what's the word that I'm looking for? A defamation of character and nobody's going to be called like proper i only get five views after five months on my videos but by the time the rapture has happened i will be vindicated i will be vindicated because i'll be gone and they'll still be here and you're gonna know exactly who they are they will have done this they will have done this and so now when i'm sitting then in the sky waiting with bated breath to watch these people get essentially humiliated for having claimed to be christian while stealing from christians i won't bat an eyelid but in the run-up too if any of them were to see my content, it would be saving, it would be healing, it would be an act of repentance sought out out of them. It would be the activity of trying to snatch them even from the flames of hell. Call out the immoral man from among you. It's about time. Like if at all, there can be Christian apologists, Christian content creators that call out like a Benny Hinn or whatever for being a false prophet or pro what do you call this like a, pro a false teacher um and what have you because his doctrine is all messed up and he's exploiting people the evidence is there there all then be also people called out that claim to be believers that aren't guys that claim it's it, like it's 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 a it's a, it's a it's a volatile environment but i'm sick and tired of being bombarded by understanding by the lord from people that frankly shock me i, I get shocked to understand that these people are using occult magic occult magic in order to continue to grow their subscriber bases and we are like the way i am so afflicted by such people as these on youtube i cannot wait for the day when they get embarrassed when they get called out because they are so sober and so sound sounding they sound really sound that's what i'm getting at their doctrine is not off because they are as sober sounding as they are they're easy to believe but they are self-deceived and this here is also a message of grace to them that they might repent now before the tribulation because they're the kinds of people that are facing mob justice once the rapture has happened because of having s stolen essentially people from the right places that's what i'm getting at mm. so frankly it's loving for me to call them out and that's exactly what i'm going to be doing in the second part next part